grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Welcome to Orange Beach Presbyterian Church's online worship service. My name is Kim. I'm the pastor here, and it is a joy to be worshiping with you all this morning. I do have one announcement to make before we begin worship, and that announcement is that we will be celebrating the Lord's Supper during this service. We will share communion together. Uh, if you would like to participate, you can use um, bread is great. If you don't have bread, crackers, a wafer, uh, something along those lines is just fine. Uh, if you have grape juice or wine, that's wonderful. If not, just grab a glass of water. Remember, what's important is not what's on the table as who's around it. And we will be gathered around together. All are welcome. So I hope that you will participate. Remember, we may not be face to face, but we are heart to heart. We are gathered united in Christ and ready to worship. So let's begin with our call to worship. All of the words that you will need to participate in today's service will be on your screen. Let us worship God. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, calls our names to come and follow him. His voice, speaking our names, draws us to him. We follow without fear, for the shepherd cares for us. Our hearts rejoice, and we can place all our trust in the Good Shepherd. Let us worship God. And let us worship God in song. I hope that you will join us for our first hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Let us go now into a time of confession. We will pray first silently, and then we will pray together in the prayer of confession found on your screen. Let us pray. And let us pray together. Patient and loving God, we stand at the gate and peer through. We keep creating our own ways, believing that we know what is in our own best interest, and we ignore the voice of the one shepherd who will guide us to peace and hope. We wander aimlessly and then wonder why we get so lost. Help us stop and listen to the shepherd's voice. Let us place our trust in the shepherd who has never failed us, who loves and guides our lives. Forgive us our stubbornness and stupidity, for we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Hear what the Lord proclaims. I shall give you a new heart 
a new spirit I will put within you. I will cause you to walk according to my ways, so you shall be my people, and I will be your God. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Before we hear God's written word, let us turn to God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, Lord, we thank you so much for this morning. We thank you for sunshine and blue skies. We thank you for cool breezes and birds singing. But above all else, Lord, we thank you for this time together, gathered with our siblings in Christ, ready and eager and excited to worship you. We are so thankful that we can sing your praises, that we can pray to you, hear your word. Lord, we pray that you will fill us with your Holy Spirit, that you will open our ears, our hearts, and our minds to not only hear your word, but hear your voice and know your message. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, as together we pray how he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is from the book of John, chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. We are picking up in the middle of a conversation that Jesus is having with the Pharisees. And Jesus says, I tell you the truth, the person who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. The person who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This Sunday is known as Good Shepherd Sunday. Today is the fourth Sunday in the season of Easter. And every year we take a look at the 10th chapter of John and the reading where Christ is described as the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. The season of Easter begins, of course, with Easter Sunday. It continues on through Pentecost, 50 days. In Easter Sunday, the beginning, we celebrate the resurrection. We proclaim that he is risen. We shout and sing about the empty tomb and the victory over death. And the season of Easter continues 
with the familiar stories that tell us who Jesus was and is and will always be. Every year in the Sundays following Easter, we reconnect with those stories of doubting Thomas as they gathered, afraid, locked away. The walk to Emmaus when Jesus opened their eyes by breaking bread. And today, the Good Shepherd. We just heard the first 10 verses of the 10th chapter of John, but there's more to it than that. Not only should we look back into the ninth chapter to see how we got here, if we keep reading, the passage ahead, the continuation, begins to discuss more in depth that Jesus as shepherd theme. It's really too much to tackle in one sermon, in one Sunday. So these passages are, are broken up, and every year we look at a different piece of it. We cycle around every three years. So this year, year A, in the Revised Common Lectionary, we read the first 10 verses. Next year, we'll read the next passage and so on, but always with the theme of the Good Shepherd. So how did we get here to this conversation between Jesus and the Pharisees? What's happening? Well, if you look back a few verses, back in chapter 9, you hear about how Jesus healed a blind man. Remember, he made the mud, he took dirt, he spit in it, he made the mud, and he put it into the blind man's eyes. And he told him to go and wash, and the man did, and regained sight. Well, Jesus did this on the Sabbath. So the Pharisees were not real happy about that, and they confronted Jesus about it. So he's in this conversation with the Pharisees. He's having this discourse about why he would heal on the Sabbath, why it's okay to heal on the Sabbath. And he talks to them in the, in the verses just before where we picked up here. He talks to them about spiritual blindness compared to physical blindness. If you remember, this was one of the passages that we looked at during Lent in the weeks before Easter. But if Jesus can heal physical blindness, he surely can heal spiritual blindness. So as Jesus is speaking with the Pharisees, as he's pointing out that they are spiritually blind, perhaps here is where he tries to give them some sight. Here is where the healing can take place when he tells them that he is the shepherd. He says, the person who doesn't enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. But the person who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. Not surprisingly, the Pharisees don't get it. Scripture tells us, they didn't understand, didn't get what he was telling them. Now, before we get too down on the Pharisees here, let's be honest, that happens to me too. I suspect it happens to all of us from time to time, right? I mean, I don't always get what God is putting right in front of me right away sometimes. Sometimes it takes me a little bit of time, maybe some prayer or introspection or study or one of my Christian friends, colleagues, mentors telling me. And honestly, sometimes it takes practically a slap to the head from God before I get it. And so the Pharisees didn't understand. And Jesus says it again. And he says it really plainly. He makes some I am statements here. He says, I am the gate for the sheep. He says, I am the gate twice in the passage we read. And then if we had continued reading, the very next verse, verse 11, um, says this other I am statement, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life 
for the sheep. Pretty plain, pretty simple, right? I am the gate. Hey, you didn't understand me? Hear this. I am the gate. I am the shepherd. <laughs> That's pretty plain. Pretty understandable, one would think. And the imagery is wonderful, isn't it? That imagery of Christ as the shepherd. Especially when you think of it in terms of the scripture where we're told that if there is one lost sheep, the shepherd knows and goes out to find it, to rescue it, to bring it back into the fold. Or how about the 23rd Psalm? where we hear that God leads us to green pastures and still waters. Of course, if Christ is the shepherd, then we are the sheep of his flock. We are the ones we read about in this 10th chapter. We are gathered up in his pen and we are the ones that he leads out. We're the ones he calls by name. It says Jesus calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. What a wonderful, amazing gift that our shepherd knows us, knows us so well that he calls us by name, loves us so much that he calls us by name. Given the current situation in the world with everything swirling around us, there can be a lot of noise, sometimes just a lot of information, sometimes shouting, sometimes just the plain old busyness of our lives. TV on, computer on, phone on, ringer turned up. Life is noisy. And through that noise, we need to be able to find Jesus' voice. We need to be able to hear it, to recognize it. I think this is one of the reasons why it's so good to have quiet time, silent time, every single day, so that we can reconnect with God. We can hear that voice. We can calm and quiet our own voices and the voices around us that may just be causing some discord so that we can hear the shepherd, the gate. This image of a gate to God's pasture can be both good and bad, which is to say that people can take this image and they can use it for both good and bad purposes. There are some who think of a gate as being a tool to keep people out. Others look at the gate and think it's there to keep everyone in. Unfortunately, I hear sometimes people suggesting that this gate is somehow closed and that perhaps we get to decide who's worthy to walk through it, who has walked through it or needs to walk through it. Sometimes we like to say who deserves to walk through it, maybe who's holy enough or Christian enough. I see a lot of judgment out there these days where people say, well, you're not a true Christian because this is what I see from you or I hear from you or this is what you've said or written or done. And so I can look at that and then I get to say that you're not a true Christian. Now while I agree that we have a duty and a responsibility as Christians to call out people when they are doing harm to others, it always troubles me a little bit when we try to say if somebody is a quote true Christian or not. I mean that's, that's above my pay scale. That's not my job. I'm not the shepherd. In fact, that's not anybody's job but the shepherd. That's Jesus' job. But I like that Jesus says, I am 
the gate. He doesn't say I'm in control of the gate. I open it, I close it, <laughs> I stand and decide who gets in. He says, I am it. I am the gate. In other words, in order to get in or out, we must go through Jesus himself. It's interesting imagery, isn't it? Going through Christ. I'm not even sure I can put into words exactly what that would look like. But just imagine, what if our whole journey were this long path through that gate, through Jesus, heading into the pasture of his flock, everybody's journey looking different from everybody else's. Keep in mind, just as Christ is a shepherd for us, guiding our paths and leading us to what is good, just as he calls me by name and as he calls you by name. He calls every single one of us. The people you know, the people you don't know. The people in your church, in your denomination, in your faith. The people you love, the people you don't love so much. The people who go to different churches and have different faith journeys. He's calling us all. God is big enough. He, God is mighty enough to not only have this flock of billions and know it as a flock, but God is also personal enough to know each and every one of us by name. I know it's hard to reconcile those two truths, but I promise you both are true. He is that big and he is that personal. In a few minutes, we will celebrate Holy Communion. We will remember Christ. We'll remember as he sat at table with his disciples. We'll remember the words that he said and the meal that he shared and the commandment that he gave to love one another. Our table is ready. We're going to hear some special music before we begin. And during that piece of special music, you'll see pictures of different communion tables. I asked fellow Presbyterians to send me pictures of their communion tables. And they answered, boy, did they ever. I got so many pictures. I couldn't even use them all. So we'll have to do this again. But you'll see pictures of all different kinds of communion tables. Some are formal, some informal. You'll see tables that have been set up at home. Perhaps they look like yours. You'll see tables set up in sanctuaries. You'll see tables prepared for World Communion Sunday. You'll see tables in front of computers or televisions as we worship online. Some of these tables are set and prepared to serve communion. Some have been, the pictures have been taken after communion has been served. Some of the tables are empty except for the communion ware. But they are all tables that unite us in Christ. As we gather with our siblings in Christ, May the Spirit of the Lord at our tables be palpable, peaceful, and present. May we recognize and feel the presence of the shepherd, the gate, the presence of Christ himself. Amen.
my friends, this is the joyful feast of God's people. We are gathered together online, but from east and west and north and south, and all united at this table. This right here is not my table. It's not Orange Beach Presbyterian Church's table. It's not even a Presbyterian table. This is the Lord's table, and all are welcome. We will eat our bread at the same time. We will drink our juice at the same time. If you are worshiping with other people in your household, feel free to serve one another. Hand them the bread, saying this is the body of Christ broken for you. Hand them their cup, saying this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now let us pray. Gracious God, Lord, pour your Holy Spirit out upon these, your gifts, the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Lord, we pray that this meal will indeed be communion with Christ, that as the saints that went before us swirl around and partake in this meal, that we will all be able to join together, truly united as one. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. On the night of his arrest, Jesus sat at table with his disciples. He took the bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, saying, This is my body. Take, eat, remember me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. He poured it, saying, This is a new covenant, written in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink this, remember me. And indeed, as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our Lord Jesus Christ until he comes again. My friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Take your bread and eat. And this, the cup of salvation, drink and remember. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for this meal. We thank you, Lord, that you have so nourished us. And we know that it is not a physical nourishment, but it is a spiritual one, one so desperately needed and one that we are so thankful for. Lord, we pray that you will fill us up to overflowing, that it is your love which will pour out of us, visible for all to see. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen.
And now we have shared the meal and it is time to go share the love of Christ with everyone around us. This is an exciting possibility. So be excited, be bold, don't be afraid. For as we part ways, we go with God the Creator, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit now and forevermore. Amen. God's children said, Amen. Amen. Amen.